Hey everybody, this is Dan Crawl. Thanks for tuning in to the podcast. I am on location today for a bonus episode, episode 15. I'm on site with Jim Trollson in Britt, Iowa. Uh, Jim and I are at his house and ready to have a great chat about uh, his life growing up in Britt to present day. Uh, just want to let people know that this is a bonus episode. We don't have any extra, um, our regular sponsors. We just have Trollson Auto sponsoring this episode today. Um, I, before I get to them though, and their business, I'm going to do my five and 10 episodes segment. Uh, this is episode 15. So 10 episodes ago on episode five, I talked with the 1973 state championship football team. We broke down each game of that season and they told some great stories about the past. Uh, five episodes ago on episode 10, I chatted with John De Leon out in New York. We talked about his dad and his uh, time at Britain West Hancock. Uh, yesterday actually was Coach De Leon's uh, memorial, so a lot of people were in town for that. Uh, check out those great episodes. Uh, I'll have the links on this link for you to look at. Uh, Trollson Auto, like I said, is sponsoring today's episode. That's Napa Auto Parts and Brit, 678 Third Avenue Southeast. They're your source for quality auto parts for your car, or truck, and Brit. Let um, Napa know how, help you find the right battery, brakes, filters, headlights wipers or other parts you need to get the job done. They also stock tools, equipment, and many other items for cars, heavy duty trucks, marine and farm equipment. Order your parts online. Drop by today at 678 Third Avenue Southeast. Call them at 641-843-3865. Um, or online orders are available for in-store or out, uh, curbside pickup as well. That's Britt Napa Auto Parts, 678 Third Avenue Southeast. They look forward to serving you. All right, Jim, you ready to go? Yeah. You yeah. bet. Thanks again, Jim. I really appreciate you coming on here. So you graduated from Britain in 1943. So that means you were born 19, what, 24, 1925? 24. 24. Yeah. Um, I was uh, sick for a whole year or so. I ended up a year behind the classmates I should have been with. Okay. Yeah. So uh, football, let's talk a little football back in high school. Um, you guys had a pretty good three year run, uh, your freshman, sophomore and junior seasons, which would have been 1939. You guys were four and four in 1940. You guys won the conference championship. Your record was six. Oh, and two ties. Um, how was that season? Do you remember that much being on the team winning the conference? No, I didn't. Uh, I didn't play on the team until I was a senior. Okay, so that was your one and only year. My dad figured he had better things for me to do at home than playing football. Yeah. He had. Uh, I had three brothers and a sister, and they all had to stop school to help support the family back in depression time. Yep, definitely. So I wanted to be the only one to graduate mm -hmm. and I made it. Nice. What do you what do you remember about the depression? Anything that stands out to you about what you guys went through? Oh things were things were tough. There were times when we really uh, didn't have enough to eat. I, I remember getting up one morning for breakfast and we didn't have any toast mm -hmm. and uh, my older brother he says I'll get you a piece he went home and, and got a couple of pieces of toast for me nice so you know what hard times was yeah definitely yeah so you, you didn't play football in 41 but the team was five one and one third in the conference and then your senior season is the year you said you played football. Um, unfortunately, it was not a great season for you guys. You didn't win any games, but you tied one game. Uh, your team only scored 12 points that season, but you had six of those points with one touchdown. Um, you had the only offensive touchdown of that entire season. Do you remember that at all? Uh, a little bit? Yeah. <clears throat> it uh, felt pretty good to, to be able to score. Yeah. Who uh who was your coach? Do you remember your coaches or your coach back then? Uh, Rockwood was uh, 
started out, as I remember, he quit mid-season or something, and we ended up with another coach. Okay. I can't call his name, <clears throat> but. Uh, hmm. Yeah. Do you know? Do you know why he quit mid-season? You remember what happened there? Or? Uh, no, I don't know. I I always figured you'd probably service. Connected. Oh yeah. I really missed him. He he was a swell fella. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I was going to ask you: Did World War Two, the bombing of Pearl Harbor, kind of affect you guys at school? Did a lot of kids yeah get yeah. drafted, go off to war, and stuff like that? I remember uh, on December seventh, Leon Woods and I <clears throat> went out hunting rabbits. And when we came back, we came walking up the street there, and uh, an old fella come out and hollered, and he says, "You guys better keep that gun ready. We got people picking on us." And oh, geez. That was the first we'd heard about about uh, the war. Mm. But from then on, it was a major item with us. Most of us was looking forward to being drafted or joining up. Mm -hmm. uh, my dad was uh, running a blacksmith shop. And that time of year, uh, harvesting and planting, he done a lot of playaway work. And it was my job to polish them. So, <clears throat> Gilbert Gunther didn't want to see me drafted. He checked with the draft board and they thought that there'd be no problem getting me deferred for work reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't didn't really like that idea. I, my brother Russ had joined the Navy mm -hmm. and I was wanting to get in and do something. Yeah. I hadn't made up my mind, but uh, a fellow teammate of mine, Joe Weiss, he says, have you checked into any, uh, anything to join? I said, yeah, I've been looking at Army. He says, you ought to check the Air Corps. They got a lot nicer uniforms. He said, they got a beautiful, beautiful outfit. I said, sounds good, Joe. So we started then uh, to get things in line to join, be a aviation cadet. Okay. So did you ever serve then or see action? Yeah, okay. we, uh, we got lined up sent in the stuff we needed and we was <clears throat> accepted and we was called to Camp Dodge. Mm -hmm. We was down there taking our physical the night our class graduated. So I missed I missed getting the diploma in front of the town. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> we were both accepted and date set to leave. There used to be a rail run right by my house here. And I'll never forget, we caught the freight at two o'clock in the morning, had to walk a block to get there, about as handy as could be. Mm -hmm. But we went on and took the aviation training. Joe flunked out and didn't think that he had the nervous constitution to what they wanted. Mm -hmm. I went on and <clears throat> graduated. Uh, 
So after you graduated, did you, where'd you end up? After I graduated, I uh, <clears throat> spent a lot of time training. Mm -hmm. I was on the East Coast taking my overseas shots when uh, the war ended over there. They sent me back and put me in a different type plane and started training for Pacific duty. Okay. And uh, we were up flying formation practice all one afternoon when we come down. Things look different in the field. People running around, jumping, carrying on. We found out then they dropped the big bomb and the war was over. Oh, man. So the only foreign duty I had was in Mexico. We'd go down there for bullfights. Okay. That's neat. What, what do you remember about dropping the bombs? What were you told about that? Like, did you were you told the casualties and what happened there? Or was it more just the war was over? Yeah, they, uh, we come up and everybody was half drunk and been on the ground all the afternoon. <laughs> and uh, that was big, big news. Oh, yeah. Yep, I bet. Uh, and did things kind of get back to normal right away, or did it take a while to kind of to get to that point? What do you remember from post-war? Uh, it took me a little while. I got uh, out. I stayed in the reserve. And uh, had a brother in Tennessee that had a real, real good business going. Uh, he invited me to uh, stop there, and I uh, decided to try and go there. I got into quite, <laughs> quite a deal. <clears throat> At that time, there was about, this is in Fayetteville, Tennessee. At that time, there was about six contractors in town building houses. Mm -hmm. And uh, there wasn't any place that I liked to rent. So brother says, <clears throat> I got connections down to Alabama where I can get lumber, or get a load and build a house. So I ended up building two houses. <laughs> Brother Russell was there for a year or so. I built a house for him and one for myself, as well as getting training in the mechanical business. Mm -hmm. You you built the house yourself. Pardon? You did you build the house yourself? The houses. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's impressive. Yeah, we had a, we had an old fellow working in the shop there. That was pretty good help. And then I got a another boy come in for some repair work. I got talk with him and. He had spent a lot of time carting. He was a colored fella. Mm -hmm. Joe Lay was his name. And I hired Joe to help. So I had a good little crew going. Cool. Then about that time, I got a notice that I was being called back to active duty. Okay. And they said probably within six months. So I hurried up and got my house sold, packed my wife up and come back to Brit. Mm -hmm. it was your wife from Brit also? My wife was from Brit, yeah. She uh, was a neighbor to me. Okay. 
she was a pretty, pretty important part of my life. Mm -hmm. When I was uh, going through school and <clears throat> my junior, junior year, uh, I had some livestock. I was milking three cows. My senior class, I took the farming end of it. And I uh, kept increasing. Dad says, you're running out of room. And he says, if you want to help, we can build us a, build us a barn. Mm -hmm. So in my junior year, we started in building a barn, 16 by 24. Nice. Believe it or not, you're sitting in it now. Oh, really? Converted it to a house, huh? When I came back from the, uh, I read the, <clears throat> looked at the apartment here in town. It was nice. Told the lady we'd take it. Time I got home, she called and she said, I forgot. I had promised that to somebody else. <laughs> Whoops. But I think what the trouble was, we had two children, and when she found out we had children, she didn't want them wrecking the apartment. Yeah. But uh, anyway, uh, when I come back on, uh, from service, why, that's the trouble I had, finding an apartment. Dad says, if you want to, you can clean that barn up a little, make make room, uh, get you by until you can find something. Mm -hmm. So that's what we did. I started out with the one little room. Mm -hmm. Added on over the years, and here we are. Added over the years, and kept adding to it until I, uh, Got a real comfortable place. It's a nice location in the edge of town. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm uh, pretty happy here. I look forward to getting up and going to work every morning. Uh, Let's talk about work. So you um, started Jim's Courtesy Motors is what it was originally called, right? Yeah. Um, you founded the business, and that's what's known as Trollson Auto or Napa today. Uh, what year did you start the business then? Uh, Jim's Curtis and Oil started in uh, 51. Okay. Um, we went along with that. Uh, and we built a new building in in 84 and long about that time we decided that we should incorporate i borrowed quite a bit of money and uh taken pat in as a partner so we incorporated and changed it to troll sonato and then when we went with napa way we uh, added Napa to it, so it's, Dan answers phone wise, Trulson's Napa Auto. Okay. Yeah. So, what was the business like back then? What was what was your kind of specialty with the in the motor business? When it started in the first uh, the first piece of equipment I bought was a spark plug cleaner. Give eight dollars for it, used one. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Tune up then was spark plugs and set of points and condenser. Mm -hmm. uh, nowadays, uh, it's like everything else. It's, it's 
changed uh, we were used to rebuild a lot of uh, a lot of units uh, now you can buy a map cheaper than you can afford labor for rebuilding mm -hmm. yep. i'm sure technology's played a big part in the last probably 15 20 years have you had a lot more technology to the business to make things quicker and more efficient for people yeah uh, back when i started did learn most of business <clears throat> from my brother uh repair manuals and so forth was unheard of mm -hmm. i got started up here where we started putting in a stock of uh, repair manuals they're still sitting there and never look them everything now is computerized yep uh, dan does a lot of his work uh, with a laptop uh, very much like the one we're talking to right now mm -hmm. Do you like the technology, or is it kind of a struggle? Uh, I really like it. I'm I'm a real nut for uh, for anything electronic. Okay. Uh, I've got a Apple Watch there. Nice. I've fallen down several times. Apple Watch has deal there they say you a felon do you need help oh. you say yes and then in about seven minutes the police and emergency crew come walking in my front door oh that's nice that's a handy handy uh, thing to have the uh watch is, is uh have a telephone it's apple and an iPad, they're all hooked together. Uh, I really, I really love that stuff. Yep, yep, it's convenient, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, so, what's kept you in Brit? What, what is it about this town that's kept you here and made you stay for all these years? Oh, bunch of nice people here. There's a few that. Uh, that we should ship out, but <laughs> all in all, uh, it's a uh, it's a real nice town. It's been getting better all the time. I served eighteen years on the town council, and uh, had a part in uh, in a lot of the a lot of the happenings. Mm -hmm. It's Hobo Day weekend. Did you do a lot of stuff up at Hobo Days? Yeah, Hobo Days. Uh, Hobo Days used to be a big deal. Perkins Auto always had a comic entry. And uh, I got started on the same thing. It got to be kind of a competition between the two of us. And uh, I remember they, they used to award prizes for first and second place and so forth and mm -hmm. they'd be published up on the, up on the midway as soon as they decided who it was and we had a lot of, a lot of fun with it mm -hmm. i bet i had uh, it got to where it take a month or more time getting something put together but it was uh, it was a fun deal. Yeah. Nowadays, uh, it's all fire trucks and ambulances. Yeah. It's a big share of the parade. Yep. Yep. And the, the horses at the end, like always. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So going, let's go back a little bit. Um, doing my research for all my football stuff, I, some names that stood out to me. I was wondering if you knew, had any good stories or knew anything about these guys. Uh, Bing Hartzell, you remember Bing? Yeah. Uh, that wasn't his real name, was it? 
No. What was? Do you know what his real first name was? Uh, I haven't been able to find it. I don't know what I ever heard. Him. He lived just a block down the road here. Okay. Uh, How about Jim's? Oh, go ahead. Pee Wee Hartzell played uh, with me. Jim Stevenson, uh, them uh, fellows that I should have been in their class. I should have been on the championship team, but I, I lost out of here being sick. Mm -hmm. yeah. How about Floyd Charbonneau, LaVon Steinhoff, uh, Floyd, Calvin Peterson was another one I'd put. Floyd yeah. Charbonneau was one of my big buddies. Yeah. Cal Peterson. Back when we was playing football, then they didn't have a bus that carried us to the game. We could. Dad let me take the Buick, and Cal and I double dated. Mm -hmm. We take our take our girls and go to the ball game. <laughs> little little different from today, I'd say. Yeah. Yeah, yep. I should say so. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, do you keep in touch with those guys over the years? Did some of them stay local? Yeah. Uh, Cal, Cal Peterson, he ended up in Four City, but uh, he would come down and have work done. I sold him a lawnmower. Uh, Pete Sharp, no was one of my best friends from way on back. And we used to, there was a big old elm tree halfway between school and where he lived and I lived. We walked together and stand under that tree and talk about what we'd like to do. Mm -hmm. uh, we ended up sharp no running a, gas station on Main Street and uh, he served on the town council for several years and he got off I got on okay and during that process we <clears throat> redone the street past his station and Cut his business to practically nothing. Mm. And Pete got a little irritated with me. He claimed that I was the guy that caused him to go broke and cut the piece. And uh, a couple of years he got over speaking again, but he was, uh, he was a tough cookie when it comes to football. Yeah. I remember the game we played Garner. There was a guy that was giving Pete a lot of trouble. And Pete comes back to the huddle and he says, I'm going to get him. My <laughs> God, I'll work on that boy. I'll get him. <laughs> and he started smacking that guy mid center every chance he got. And he ended up getting a cut across his forehead, I think. As I remember, it took five stitches. They took him off and stitched him up, and he come back in the game. <laughs> when we was uh, when we was planning on joining the army, there was a big rock by the ditch east of town. And we'd go out there, and one of us would lay behind it, and the other guy would go off 50 yards and shoot at it <laughs> and uh, see what it sounded like to hear them bullets ricochet. Yeah. Kind of a dumb idea. <laughs> that's that's boys every generation, always finding dumb things to do, right? Yeah. This is what we do. Yeah. Did um, I, I was going to mention, you mentioned Coach Harvey Rockwood was your football coach. Um, I did a little research, like I do. Um, he is still third in school history and wins for football. 
Yeah. He has 31 wins. Steve Everett has 38. And then there's a guy named Bob Sanger who has 358 wins. And so I don't, I don't think anyone's going to catch coach anytime, but it, it's still kind of cool that a guy who coached yeah. starting in 1930, still third on that list yeah. for, for wins. His uh, Mark Sanger's fourth with 22. So he'll, he'll catch him here pretty soon. But yeah. I just thought that was neat that in the whole hundred some years, Coach Rockwood's name's still up there pretty high. So Harry was a, he was a real nice fellow. He, nice to get along with. We had a, a fellow who would play like he was hurt. He lay on the field and wouldn't get up. And run out and see if he needed help. And that went on for a while. And finally, Harvey went out there one day. And boy, he laid in on that guy, whacked him side the head. And Nothing wrong with you, buddy. Get up and get going. <laughs> yep, we've had enough That's of this. The way he, uh, the way he operated. Yep. We had a we had a fella playing a big, tall, long digger guy. I can't call his name. I've been trying to think of it. But uh, on practice. He grabbed the ball and he run the length of foot. Nobody put him down. And Harvey got on a spot that I took after him one day. He was going full bore. I hit him about hip high and knocked him head and over end. Oh, uh, Rock would come running over and pat me in the back. He says, that's the kind of defense we need. Nice. But uh, on the other hand, he, he's pretty tough. Yep. You know what ever happened to him? Did you keep in touch at all or know anything about him afterwards, after no, high school? No, I never did. I, ne I never found out what... Uh, I always figured it was probably service connected or something they left, but uh, we ended up with a different guy coaching. I, I don't, he wasn't a very good coach. Mm -hmm. Mild mannered compared to Rockwood. Wouldn't get, wouldn't get you too excited to be out there and play. Pretty yeah. mild, yeah. Yeah. I was going to ask you, what do you remember about the Britt Junior College? Did you have any interactions with the people there, or do you remember much about it? Uh, Charbonneau, I think, uh, took a year or so of it. Uh, runs in my mind, they had a six-man football team. Yep. And... Uh, they won a game at Esterville or someplace over there, and they come back and it's such a big deal. They had a meeting and and uh, that time I believe it was uh, an Anderson that was playing, but uh, the music teacher got up and was telling about going to the game. And she said, uh, I wish I could remember that guy's name. Anyway, she said, he just picked a guy up and showed him off. And, uh, <laughs> she was all excited about the game, but they had a pretty good going thing for a few years. But uh, they closed in the what, early 50s, maybe something like that, mid 50s. Uh, yeah, I think in 51, 52, maybe. Mm -hmm. Do you remember why they closed? Pardon? Do you remember why they closed the college? Why it shut down? No. Yeah, maybe. Probably financial troubles would be my guess. So as we're wrapping this up, Jim, what's the key to your longevity? You said you're at 97, almost 98. 
you still go to work every day, you're sharp as a tack. What, what's the key to, to having a good life like you had? I think God's got a, uh, something planned for me. I don't know what it is yet. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> I uh, had some ultra trouble one time and they had me on all kinds of milk diets, and so on and so forth. And I read an article from a fella. He'd been an army uh, doctor, and he was telling about the trouble. And he says, "Ultra troubles are caused a lot of times by what you're doing," and. Uh, he says, I found out that uh, about three ounces of wine with your meal makes a big difference. Yeah. So I started doing that and uh, found out that cause of my ulcer was trying to fix a hundred lawnmowers all at one time. <laughs> and I got, got a little help there. And, Got over the ultra trouble. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's great. Well, I'm, I'm, got, uh, oh, go ahead. I stayed, uh, stayed in the reserve and Dr. Shaw and Jack Schrader and I, uh, three of us used to go to Mason City to reserve meetings. Uh, well, I got to be a good friend of Dr. Shaw and uh, he didn't have any special cure for ulcers, but he says, what you're doing makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. You keep pretty busy even to this day. Has that been part of it? Just yeah. being active? Yeah, the lawnmower business would come all at once. And, uh, there's just just no way of of doing it all. Mm -hmm. Down through the years, I've I've found some real good mechanics for helpers. Uh, the big trouble was them. They after they got so good, uh, I couldn't pay them for what they was worth. So yep. They end up someplace else. Mm -hmm. But uh, I've got son Patrick and uh, grandson Dan. They're both taking care of the place real good. So <clears throat> I don't have to worry about. It. I go to work in the morning and filed some invoices and so forth and, and uh, spend the afternoon playing with my cats. Yep. I'd say you've earned that. You put your time in over the years, that's for sure. So well, it's about oh well, that's a perfect time right there. There we go. Anniversary <laughs> clock. Nice got for our 60th anniversary yeah and that's that's perfect time because we're wrapping it up that's like our cue to be done right there we go so um jim i just want to thank you so much for letting me into your house to do this hopefully everyone can hear me there that's a that's a cool sounding clock there uh but i appreciate it doing this extra episode for me and telling some great stories so thanks thanks jim for having me any anything else you want to add here before we wrap up uh, I'm real, uh, real proud of the school we got down here now. Yeah, got a lot of money invested there, but it, it, it's. Uh, I'm not one that <clears throat> gets down and watches all the games. Uh, back to Pete Charbno, he, he went down to the ball game and 
get him as old, he'd come walking out, fell over dead. Oh, geez. So, uh, but uh, they've, they've got a real nice, real nice school. Yep, yep, we're all pretty proud of being from Brit, being from West Hancock, that's for sure. So, yeah. yeah. Well, my next episode is coming up this week with Chuck Boozman, a former coach. And then the week after that, I'm doing the 96 state championship football team. Uh, you still have a little bit of time to buy some cornhole board tickets for the raffle. That'll be on August 25th. And thanks again, um, the founder of Trollson Auto uh, and Trollson Auto Napa for sponsoring this episode. Again, you can find them at 678 Third Avenue Southeast here in Britt or call them at 843-3865. Uh, thanks again, Jim. I really appreciate you coming on here and go Eagles. Uh, appreciate the effort. You bet. All right. See you next time, everybody.